What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Weld.com. So today we're going to be talking about arc blow. So we all may not understand what the concept of arc blow is. Essentially what it is, it's, it's a phenomenon. It's something that happens while we're welding. It occurs a lot in the shield of metal arc welding process where it's most visible. It hits me a lot in, in the vertical position. I usually don't get a lot horizontal, flat for some reason. I don't know, like I said, it's a phenomenon. One of the things that uh, you'll notice is as you're going up about three quarters of the way, you just start getting a really violent reaction. Uh, so what happens is we have electri uh, an electrical current going through this system, obviously. That's what we're welding with. We have a negative and a positive lead. Uh, and what that does is you have electrons flowing through. So from my understanding, you have an electrical force rotating in one direction. And then as I introduce that welding rod, uh, the electrical force is flowing in another direction. So let's say one's going clockwise, one's going counterclockwise. Well, then when they run into each other, it's almost very similar to putting two magnets together north to north or south to south. They want to resist. So you'll notice what happens is when you come up, it'll start pushing the filler metal right out of the, uh, the welding area. Uh, you'll get a big crater that develops in there. Uh, it's just all kinds of bad. It's not fun to deal with. Today we're going to go and talk about a couple things that we could do to eliminate arc blow or kind of mitigate some of the, uh, the effects of it. So we all know that one of the things is we can switch over to AC or alternating current. The problem with that is, is a lot of the shield of metal arc welding, that's going to take place in the field. A lot of the engine drives don't have the capability of AC because most everybody's running DC current. In addition to that, all the welding procedures and what the welders are qualified and tested for is uh, based off of a welding procedure specification. Most of the time, uh, not 100%, but a very high majority of the time, all these procedures are written, written in DC, meaning we can't change our polarity. So I can't switch over to AC when I'm out in the field to eliminate that arc blow, get rid of it, and, and weld over and complete that, that weld. Because the polarity is what's called an essential variable when the welding procedure specification is written. Anytime we change an essential variable, such as polarity, we have to rewrite the entire procedure. So today we're gonna to talk about a couple different ways to get rid of arc blow or mitigate it completely. Let's go ahead and start off with the first one. All right, so this is just a homemade contraption that uh, my buddy Ryan Eubank showed me how to do. Uh, all it is is just two ground clamps or workpiece clamps with about a one foot to 18 inch piece of uh, cable in between. And the premise of this is I'm going to hook this to the bottom of one of my pieces and the top of the other. Don't ask me why it works, it just works. I've been using it uh, ever since he taught me, probably seven to 10 years ago, seven, eight years ago, and it works. It's an awesome little trick that anytime I'm running into arc blow, I go grab this out of the cabinet or the gang box, throw it up on the piece, don't have any issues. Uh, you can use this out in the field if you're splicing two columns together. We can also use this on fillet welds and test plates for like a groove weld. So let me show you how that would look on a plate. So I could clamp to the bottom of one, clamp to the top of the other. Just wanna clamp opposite sides of the two plates. Don't ask me why it works, I just know that it works. So give it a shot. Like I said, you can use this out in the field, throw it in the gang box, wrap it up to the piece you're gonna weld on, or for you students that are in school, or if you have to take a welding test, try it out. I usually uh, carry one with me uh, in, inside the toolbox. All right, so what we've done is we uh, set up some Kit Kats, and uh, if you haven't seen this video yet, go check it out. It's how to make the most of uh, your testing material, get the most testing out of the least amount of material. But we went ahead, set one up, filled them up about two thirds of the way because the last third is where we end up usually getting the arc blow. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with the jumper cable first. So we'll clamp the top side of one plate and the bottom side of the other. And then we'll go ahead and run this little bit. We'll see if we get any arc blow in that top section. All right, so this is about the spot where we normally uh, get arc blow. You'll see the backing plate start to open up quite a bit, like a big uh, cavern open up, and then the uh, metal from the welding rod will actually start pouring out into the welding zone. Doesn't seem to be doing it right now. All right, so that's what we're looking for. Didn't have to deal with any arc blow. Everything turned out well. We got a good tie-in. Let's go ahead and move on to the second joint. We'll go ahead and discuss the second method. All right, so the next one is pretty simple uh, for most people, right? It's just moving the workpiece clamp as close as you can to the welding area. Now, for most of us, that's pretty simple because we're welding in a shop. But once you go outside, like if you have a rig, uh, especially those that are doing structural steel, you know, the welding machine, it could be up to 200 feet away from you or better and you don't have access to the workpiece clamp because it's, it's grounded somewhere over on the other side of the building and uh, you know you're, you just have the one lead that you've pulled out. So you, you actually save a lot of time doing it that way. But if we can get the workpiece clamp closest to the material that we're, we're gonna work on, electricity is gonna take the path of least resistance. So if we can get that right in our welding area, that's just gonna be better off for us. So the rule of thumb is, 
If I'm welding an eighth inch diameter or smaller electrode, clamp towards the bottom of the weldment and weld away from the ground clamp or away from the workpiece clamp. If I have a 532nd diameter or larger stick electrode, I'm going to clamp to the top and weld towards the workpiece clamp. So because I'm using eighth inch rods, we're gonna go ahead and stick this one on the bottom. Again, this is usually the spot where we start running into arc blow. You can see it too because the arc just gets really erratic and unstable. Puddle starts getting really thick and the arc length just starts growing beyond control. But you can't see that right now. All right, so once again, don't have any arc blow to deal with. We're gonna go ahead and move off to the, the last one, which is another simple trick. All right, so for this piece, uh, we're actually, because we have it sitting up on a fixture, we're gonna use the fixture as part of the workpiece. But if you take your workpiece clamp and simply wrap it around the part that you're working on, obviously out of the welding area because you don't wanna burn the, uh, the coating on the, uh, the sleeve here. But if we just wrap it around a few times, and again, don't ask me why it works. Science, it's above my head, but it actually works. Just kind of make like a little coil. Again, it's gonna be hard for the people that are out in the field unless you can get enough of your workpiece clamp to the area where you're gonna be working. So we have this wrapped up around here. Essentially, from what I'm told, it kind of disrupts that magnetic field that's created by uh, the electromagnetic arc blow, and it kind of eliminates that for some reason. I know that on the, uh, the previous one, we just clamped down here because we're using eighth inch diameter or smaller, but now because we're using a completely different method, we're just gonna go ahead and clamp it up here. So it's not gonna matter where you clamp it, uh, if you can wrap your workpiece clamp or that cable around the fixture that you're going to be working with or around the weldment that you're going to be welding on. If you can get it wrapped around there, it really shouldn't matter where you put your workpiece clamp. Uh, but if you don't have enough to wrap around the piece or it's just not feasible, uh, you can go ahead and try and clamp it to the bottom and then weld away from it with your eighth inch electrodes. Okay, again, this is usually in the area where the arc flow starts to occur. But as you can see, everything is nice and calm and stable. That's what we want throughout the entire piece that we're working on. All right, so again, no arc blow. Everything worked out uh, just fine. Didn't have arc blow on either or any of the pieces that we worked on. So as you can see, there's a bunch of different methods you can use. So the best thing we can do when we start getting arc blow in our piece is just to stop right there in your tracks clean it out, don't try and force the rod in there, you're just gonna make things worse than it is. Um, try one of these methods, you know, stop, clean it, try one of these methods out, see which one works best for you for that application. There is a specific viewer that I would like to request a comment from, and that's Roger Roger. So for those of you that don't know, he watches quite a bit of our videos, and when we have technical videos uh, with a lot of electrical stuff going on that I don't quite understand, he usually drops a a good synopsis down there in the comment section that kind of explains that. So if you could do that, Roger Roger, for the arc blow situation and why some of these methods actually work, uh, I'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, I want to take a second to thank Bowler for sending us some of these, uh, these Fox EV50 7018 rods. These things ran great today. Uh, good arc initiation, smooth puddle profile, very smooth, crisp arc. We're gonna be using a lot more of the bowler on the channel, so stay tuned for that. We're gonna be going over some of their different MIG wires and electrodes and probably some TIG wire. Uh, so check that out. Uh, appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Questions and comments and concerns, you can put them down in the comment section. We'll do our best to help you out. And until next time, make your world better than your last.